Okay, so here we are. It is September 1st. We're out in some soybean fields in Ontario County. I was out here looking for diseases and soybean aphids and came across this spot in the field where all of a sudden we have some dead and dying plants here. You can see the brown sticking up above that. Particularly as you go down this row, we can see more of these, these plants that uh, obviously have died, browned up. And there's many culprits, but the first culprit I'm looking for is, is white mold. And how do we identify that? We go down to the base of these plants. We have a lot of brown ones right here. We go down to the base, underneath the canopy. That's what we're looking for. Okay, we got this white reproductive structure down at the base here, this white fuzz, and how it gets its name, white mold. Within those, that white fuzz, we normally find the black sclerotia, or the reproductive structures for future generations. Uh, sort of like the seeds of a weed. And they're here. So obviously this is white mold. There's no other disease that has that white fuzz down uh, where the plant actually got infected and what node it got infected. Uh, there were small mushrooms that were down here, the sclerotia. You know, the mushroom comes out of the reproductive structure. It uh, releases spores down here in the canopy, and those spores land on uh, decaying flower petals and come in through that petal into the developing pod, into the plant, and work their way systemic killing uh, this whole plant as you go up. If you pull a plant out and look at it, um, we can see the white fuzz uh, has infected the whole plant into the pods, uh, killing the plant. Some of the black reproductive structures you can see here, uh, the sclerotia, are evident uh, on this plant, and those will fall off at harvest and remain in the soil. Can remain in the soil for 10 years, and uh, so very viable, much like a large seed and can, can last many, many years each year you have one of these. So we, we see the structures here, we definitely know it. Sometimes the structures don't show on the outside, and so we actually have to get in and break open a plant. And here I broke one open inside here, looking at the pith. We see some structures on the external, but also inside, within the pith, you find these black reproductive structures filling up the inside of this too. So again, sometimes it doesn't show on the outside, or maybe it doesn't have the white fuzz on a dry year, but always split the stalk looking for you know the inter internal ones. So here we are, it's September, it's showing. Nothing we can do at this point. Uh, we try to plant the most res tolerant varieties. There's no resistance, but tolerant varieties. But everything we do, even culturally and, and chemically, with fungicides, it is hard to control this disease when Mother Nature has the right conditions, lots of moisture, hot, humid. Um, we can try to plant on wider rows, 30 inch rows. Uh, again, uh, highest tolerance use fungicides, but to be honest, without true resistance, this is a tough one to control. So you kind of deal with it, you watch where it is, you don't go bean on bean, particularly in a field like this. Uh, we want to go you know, to something else, alternate host, and leave it out of beans for you know, a couple years if you can. So maybe those sclerotia will, will do their thing in a non-host crop and then not be there when you go back to beans. All right, so here we are, September 1st, white mold in Ontario County.